Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. Today's story is brought to you by Smiley Face Coffee. Yes, that's my coffee. The store link is in the description where you will find 36 different types of coffee for you to enjoy. Since it's October, I'd suggest trying out pumpkin spice. Now, let's get started with today's story. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user argue or homeless. Apparently, the guy, 42 male, I've 38 female, have been seeing for about 6 months, friends for 2 years, would rather see me homeless than risk a fight. Am I being entitled or am I wasting my time? I've been divorced for a little over a year. My ex financially ruined me and I've been having a hard time recovering. I thought I had everything on lock and was starting to get a leg up until I lost my job. Layoff, very sudden, unexpected layoff. They torched our whole department with a week's notice and a meager month's severance. Things have been bad. Basically, I moved here with my then husband and our relationship failed roughly three months later. He cheated and moved out one day to be with her. I kept our one bedroom apartment where I still live, so downsizing isn't really an option. A lot of my money went for this move. The job I had was one I got shortly after moving here. Last hired, first fired, I guess, so my savings were obliterated. I've been married to an awesome guy for 15 years, why would you suspect he'll use your money and then cheat? But that's what happened. Now, jobs don't grow on trees in my field, it's pretty much saturated. I've been applying to everything, including bagger at a grocery store, just to have some income because $250 a week unemployment doesn't even cover rent. I don't have close friends here, never really got the chance to make any before the crap hit the fan, except the guy I'll mention in this post. I have one brother I'm not close to at all and our parents are dead. They passed away in a car accident four years ago. Our family was never large or close. I don't even have any aunts, uncles or distant cousins to rely on. The one friend I did make was a man named Paul. I tried to meet up till work got too busy to go anymore, so we clicked and stayed in touch. He was there through the divorce. Around six months ago, we did what came naturally and started seeing each other. We always seemed to have a connection. It was really just a matter of time before me feeling ready. He's been great. He is understanding and patient of my circumstances, generous and sweet, but not afraid to tell me what's up if he thinks I need to hear it. I went to his house the day I was laid off and I was a mess. I had no idea what I was going to do or how I was going to keep my apartment. I still don't. And he offered, remember this, he offered, with no prompting whatsoever, to let me stay with him. It wasn't a move in together thing because obviously we aren't ready for that, but a you can stay for a set amount of time that we will agree upon. At the end of that time, we will see where we are. We talked about it extensively, about concerns, expectations, boundaries, and what to do if there are problems. And then, two weeks later, all of a sudden, he takes it back. Really casually, just like, Oh, that was a knee jerk. I meant it when I said it, but I'm not easy to live with and I haven't had a roommate in 10 years. We'd end up hating each other. Lol, haha, <laughs> so I guess this is funny now. I don't think I can help after all. I'm sorry. But he didn't want to break up. He didn't want anything else to change. I was livid. I am going to lose my apartment unless a huge miracle happens this week. I have absolutely nowhere to go. I have two dogs, one of which is old and is in his last months, and I am literally going to end up either in a shelter without my dogs, on the street, or living in my car. Those are the only options. And it's fine if he didn't want to help. I would have, no matter how many fights we had or even if it broke us up. Nobody I claim to love is going to end up homeless if I can help it. And if I have to sacrifice our relationship to save them from getting into that cycle, then so be it. I'll meet someone else someday, but it's okay if he doesn't feel that way. His house, his say. 
But what I hear him saying is my well-being is less of a priority than his comfortable life of solitude, which may get upset by someone leaving towels on the floor. He would rather see me homeless with at least one dead dog than sacrifice having 100% of his time to himself. I understand it as him being totally okay visiting me, sleeping on a park bench and then going home by himself and not thinking twice about it. I could even understand if it was a knee jerk and then hours or a day or two later he said, now that I think of it, it wouldn't be a good idea. But weeks of planning and conversation only to go back on his offer? I never even asked, he offered. I took a few days to think and cool off, but I kept coming up to the same place. He would sleep fine knowing I was out there somewhere homeless as long as he could still watch TV naked and playing with himself in the living room or whatever he does. Which is his right. But if he wants his solitude, that's what he can have. He doesn't get to turn his back on someone he says he loves and then still gets the sex, the companionship and all the other nice things in the relationship. He gets his solitude. When I explained this to him, he acted like he had never offered and accused me of being entitled and that he was doing this to save our relationship. Even if that's the case, then I'm in a relationship that can never advance because he wants his life 100% his way and that will never work if he also wants to, you know, have a relationship. So please be blunt with me. Am I entitled or he's a selfish commitment foe who really doesn't care what happens to me? Wow, Opie, I gotta say your I hope ex-boyfriend totally sucks. Even I was taught as a kid in Chile that el que da y quita le sale una jorobita, which basically translates to the one that gifts and take away gets a hunchback. Hmm, maybe something is lost in translation. Anyways, from what you told us, you guys had a discussion about it. You guys set a time frame for how long you should have stayed there if you were to stay there. He offered it to you. You didn't prompt him. You didn't ask him to do it or anything like that. Maybe he felt under pressure to say it because you were there and your world was crumbling and it was the way to support, I don't know. And maybe it was a knee-jerk reaction, but of course, as you understand, his house, his say, he is entitled to take it back. But after two weeks of planning, where you guys already hashed out details and all of that stuff and just take it back then, yeah, that's a crappy thing. And yeah, sure, he can do it, but he can't expect you to stay around like that. I mean, you can't rely on him. You can't be in a relationship with somebody you don't trust. So if you want, just forget about everything else. The one thing is, you can't trust him, so why be in a relationship with him? So OP, just stay broken up, forget him, and try to do whatever you can to keep yourself afloat. Maybe get a part-time job, anything else that you can try to get in the meantime. Since you stayed in your apartment, you still have your stuff, maybe you can start selling some stuff in order to stay afloat until you get another job or even just sell everything get your dogs get your car and move to another city where you could find a job and what do you guys think about this situation what would you do if you were in her shoes let me know in the comment section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said Tim Probable says he offered and he took it back and now he wants your relationship to be back to what it was before he offered which is what basically friends with benefits He's demonstrably not qualified for the friends part, which means he's not entitled to the benefits. I mean, I get having boundaries, I even kind of get having no no, go homeless, I've got boundaries, though I don't sympathize, but dude wants to eat his cake and have it too and then make it live out of his car? Nope. And OP responds, I think you just said what I wanted to say better than I said it, lol. Intellectually, I understand. I value my current lifestyle above all else. I mean, it's an option and it can have its advantages. But if that's the way he chooses to live without compassion for others, then one cannot expect those others to be in one's life. And I am not a random stranger who knocked on the door one night. I was his damned girlfriend. Honestly, I believe he probably would have left a random stranger in because that's the right thing to do. He'd feed them, let them have a shower, buy them a change of clothes and then send them back out on the street the next day knowing he did the right thing, even though in no way actually solved the person's problem or gave anything of himself. I believe he thinks he loves me. Probably even does in as much as he can, but allowing serious harm to come to someone you claim to love because you don't want them to inconvenience you with their presence simply isn't enough. 
This isn't, he wouldn't bring me NyQuil when I had a cold. This is a very real possibility of having nowhere to live. Byron Un says, quote, Been married to an awesome guy 15 years. Why would you suspect he'll use your money and then cheat? That's what happened. End quote. What about financial assistance from him? I take it you are divorced from him or separated. He could be legally required to assist you if you legally asserted so. Or am I missing something? And Opie responds, he's not. He had been, and I assume still is, a student for the last three years. I made more than he did before we moved. If anything, he could be an even bigger a-hole than he was and could have asked me for support. One-Eyed Man 99 says, Bluntly, your relationship with this man is over. Although you may be able to guilt trip him into giving you some financial assistance on the way out, you could ask to borrow something. He may well have had semi-valid reasons for not wanting to take you in, but at this point, that's kind of irrelevant. My guess is that you're going to have to skip town and find some place to live that's cheaper and or with better employment prospects. It's entirely possible you'll have to leave your dogs behind. Yes, that really, really sucks, but there's nothing to be gained by pretending otherwise. Additional information from Opie's comments. What upsets me most is the casual way he just took it back. Not even really an explanation. He didn't ask how I felt about it. He didn't explain how he had arrived at his decision to reconsider. Nothing. Had he done those things, I may have felt less played with. If he had shown me how he got from this is what I want and what I would want someone to do for me to actually this is more cons than pros. But he just kind of spat out as actually I don't want to do this after all because I'm hard to live with. Which translates as well I could but it's not worth the effort. Because everyone is hard to live with. Anyway, here's what I have been doing to stay afloat so far. I'm doing Lyft, which is a little money. Downsized my phone plan to $40 a month. I'm going to food banks. I'm totally giving back if and when I can. I'm in contact with every staffing agency near me. Nothing has come of it yet. Also, my card is paid off, but not worth much. I have thought and I'm still thinking of selling it, but public transportation here rots. There's basically none available before 6am and if I should get a job in my field, those jobs usually start early am. Finally, I've been looking at shared houses. I've had a couple of leads, but so far none panned out. Now, I acknowledge he can make any choice he wants regarding who's allowed in his home, when and for how long. He's also allowed to change his mind. It's that, to me, I love you and, well, looks like you're sleeping on the street, sorry, are incongruent. And he originally offered, then flippantly took it back after lots of discussion, which included even the possibility of putting our romantic or sexual relationship on hold for the time we lived together. Which would have been a specified time, a few months, so that we didn't end up living together before we were ready. Alright, well, the community is OP. The relationship is over and OP needs to focus on what she can do to be in a better situation. Now, OP has given us a rundown of everything that she's doing and apparently nothing's working. So I do think that OP should just sell everything she can, get on her car with her dogs, hopefully, and just move to another town. But anyways, it's time that we move on to the update to see what happened next and how the story ends. Now, instead of suggesting one of my playlists, I'm gonna suggest once again you go check out Smiley Face Coffee. I made it for us. The link to the shop is in the description below and also on the top right corner of the screen right now. Now let's move on with that update. Well, we ended up talking about it a second time. He just insisted on continuing on like nothing was different and I just couldn't do that. I explained to him that if he didn't want roommates or a significant other, anyone living with him, that is 100% within his rights, but then don't offer. I told him that the fact that he did offer, we had a lengthy conversation about it and we're making plans and then he changed his mind is why I was upset. I would have been able to understand if he knee jerk over promised and then later or a day or two even decided, oh my god, that's not actually going to work, oh crap. I could have gotten past that eventually, but weeks of planning and then going back on it was something I wasn't okay with. Then I told him that I understood he has the right to put his wants and needs first, but if they come before my well-being and personal safety, then I obviously wasn't a priority. 
He backpedaled and explained that he had money issues himself. To which I reminded him that I could contribute. I have unemployment, I drive Lyft, and I had never planned on asking him to support me. I just can't afford rent. He said he didn't want to slowly drag into living together and he could see where it could lead that way. I reminded him again that I had wanted to put a time limit on it because if we ever did live together as a couple, I wanted it to be because we both truly and consciously wanted that and not it just ended up that way. The agreement would have been for three months. At the end of that time, if nothing had changed, it would at least put me in a position to save a little money and move out of state to a good friend's place across the country. Also, I wouldn't be stuck in a lease I can't buy out. Three months would have been three months, regardless. He then said I would take my resentment over my situation out on him and he didn't want that. So I was like, so I'll help you, but actually, nah, go die on the street. Isn't it supposed to make me resent you? I said I was just done. He wanted what he wanted, which was absolutely okay, but then I didn't want to be someone who jerked me around and didn't care about my safety because we might have an argument or two. I told him I wished him well, gave him a hug, and left. Three days later, he texted me that I could stay. I was like, nah, I'm good. I don't want to be someplace I'm not truly wanted. Take care. As far as my situation, I did pick up a couple of jobs and managed to pay rent for another month. But after this, I don't know. I've applied to anything I can think of and I've had no luck. But at least I'm not dealing with all this stress with someone who loves me but not giving a damn of what happens. Thank you all for giving me a perspective that no, I was not being unreasonable and it wasn't that he decided who lives in his home, which I never disagreed with, but that it was messed up of him to offer a plan, go back on it, and then want to act like it never happened. And for the people who implied I have no market value to him, my divorce was because my ex cheated. If he didn't want to be married to me anymore, cool. But then he should have divorced first and then started a new relationship. And my being out of work was due to my company going out of business entirely. Neither one is at all my fault. But thanks for thinking it is. Smiley face. I have plenty of value regardless of my relationship status or if something crappy has befallen me or not. Well, OP, it's not a happy update because of your current situation, but at least you're out of that relationship with that douche and you can focus on yourself. Honestly, OP, again, if I was in your shoes, I would just sell everything but my car, take my dogs and go live somewhere else. So on that note, here's wishing you the best in the future, OP. Hopefully something good happens. Take care and thank you for sharing. Now, let's finish this video with a mood booster post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and it's by user Cowthor. We only speak to an attorney? Okay then. I was in a very bad car accident in 2021. I ended up with a 5 day hospital stay and had to have months of physical therapy and follow up care with a number of specialists. Most of the time, getting records, setting appointments, preauthorization, or anything related to my care was simple and didn't involve much and almost always could be authorized by my name and birth date. I called a provider who had billed my insurance incorrectly, so they wouldn't pay for it and I was getting stuck with the bill. The call went something like this. The company said, Hello, please be advised this call may be recorded for training and quality purposes. How may I help you today? I recently got care from X person at X location and there was some incorrect billing, so I am being billed for it and not the insurance company. Can I please have your name and birth date? I provide it. I am unable to speak with you about this matter. What? Why not? I am only authorized to talk to an attorney about this matter. Me, queuing malicious compliance. What the F? Okay then, I am representing myself in all legal matters. Now please, discuss this matter with me. They were in silence for about 4 seconds and then they said, One moment sir. I get put on hold for about 3 minutes and when they come back we get straight to discussing my issue and get it quickly resolved. I don't think they had run into that before and had to figure out if that loophole counted. It does and always should. You have to have an attorney, my butt. 
Well, OP, they said that one that represents himself usually has a fool for a client. Not in this case. You showed them. Thanks for sharing, OP. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.